Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm here to present uh, Reaction.jl, uh, which is uh, you already had a quick introduction about this package in the, in the tutorial before. And so uh, indeed, Reactant is a new kid on the block for uh, kind of uh, GPU and old kind of device programming. Um, so it's a collaboration with many people. Uh, unfortunately, I am the only one that we come to present. Um, so. Let's start with a simple example case um, that uh, would be the process of uh, like a Julia developer optimizing a function. So if you write a simple function uh, that does a kind of linear algebra uh, operations, and if you have a, like a, uh, initially this function would perform three allocations, like one for each matmul call and then one for the results. Um, and it's uh, performing two mul matrix multiplications and then add one add operation, which is not ideal. So one wise developer could say, okay, I will try to reduce this but with my knowledge of linear algebra and just reduce this to uh, two allocations, one for each intermediary matrices and uh, one matrix multiplication. Uh, so it is already much better. But if you are like a hardcore Julia developer, you know, of a um, method of the MUL function and you can actually perform all of this in just one allocation and one matrix multiplication, which that would be like the, the maybe ultimate way to formulate the same results. Um, and the, now the question is why doesn't the compiler does this for you? Um, and that's been already kind of exposed in the, in the tutorial, but the Julia compiler is uh, does not have a full view of the of the program, and there is nothing in in the Julia compiler, uh, no rules specific about uh, what's the matrix multiplication, so it cannot really uh, reason about the things. Um, and reactants uh, in reactant to capture the whole program on arrays, and reactant is actually able to reason about uh, operation on arrays, and in this case it can perform a few optimizations. So if we look at the output of the uh, program optimized by reactant. It looks something like this. Uh, and you can see it quite did not uh, optimize all the way, but uh, there's still a single uh, matrix multiplication instead of two. Um, so there are still uh, optimization potential, but uh, it's, it's still an improvement over maybe what uh, was naively written. And so, uh, in short, reactant the gel is uh, is uh, having two uh, array types. One is uh, called a concrete array, so it's uh, the array types that will store your data. So you create a concrete array with uh, calling the reactant to array function, and this uh, this array will live on on the default device for reactant. Um, and the second one is traced array. You, so as a user, you don't really interact with a traced array. And a traced array is just an array. We, we know a reactant knows the shape, but it doesn't know the data. And then it records the operation happening on this error array. That allows it to trace through the whole program and then do optimization on this program. And the, the entry point to use reactant is to call the add compile macro on a function call. And then it would trace the, the function that's given with uh, arguments. And then output a new a new callable object that's uh, executing the same program but in an optimized way. Um, so that's yeah, just what I say. We capture the the program uh, in in MLIR, which is a representation. Um, then reactant has a few optimizations. It runs these optimizations, run uh, automatic differentiation if if needed on the program. And then it dispatched the, the compile program to uh, the Excel runtime, which is a state of the art runtime that's used uh, by JAX and TensorFlow. And one advantage of the Excel runtime, it can evaluate things on uh, GPUs, CPU, but also TPUs, notably. Um, so, um, quick list of, of features of Reactant. So, we capture, uh, Reactant captures high level uh, array operations. Uh, it contains many linear algebra optimizations, hundreds of them actually that are not included in other uh, such uh, things, so it, it can be interesting. Uh, it has also a feature of uh, re retargeting uh, kernels, so if you write, a, I will do a short demonstration afterwards, but if you write a CUDA kernel, it can maybe retarget it to other devices. Um, and then it leverages the XLA runtime 
for evaluation. It's unlike JAX, it supports mutation, uh, control flow in a slightly limited manner, and uh, of course, automatic differentiation through the enzyme package. Um, and interestingly, for maybe uh, uh, users, it uh, supports multi-device execution by sharding your arrays. So you can have sharded arrays that are actually distributed across many devices on maybe different computers. And so this is one way of doing multi-device execution, but I think uh, we are in the process of supporting MPI programs as well. And, um, and also interesting feature is that it uses the same underlying representations as JAX. So you can actually call uh, JAX uh, models from within uh, Reactant and vice versa. You can export your model to, uh, to JAX. Uh, so I will do a um, quick demo of uh, running CUDA kernel on other devices. So here I have kind of the Hello World CUDA kernel. And then if you set the default backend of uh, Reactant to CPU, you can still run it um, on uh, like uh, dummy inputs. And you will, uh, Reactant will actually uh, compile and, and run this, this thing. And uh, interestingly also, it supports on TPU, which is a kind of a different programming model. And for this, you need a raise equal true keyword that would actually raise the uh, CUDA kernel to um, stable HL1. So a quick example of the capabilities of Reactant on this. Reactant successfully uh, raises uh, Ocean and against model, which is an Ocean model with like hundreds of kernel calls. That's these kernels are written in a kernel abstraction. And then it's able to raise them all the way to stable HL1 and then evaluate the model on TPUs. Um, so as I said, uh, Reactants also supports uh, automatic differentiation through the enzyme.gl package. So it's the same API as enzyme.gl and it can actually be compiled by Reactant and Reactant implements all the rules for the array operation it, it, it tracks. Um, I think uh, custom, like, uh, custom rules are not supported yet, unfortunately. Um, Performance-wise, uh, Reactant is, since it's able to see the whole compute graph of array operations, uh, it performs better than uh, like a CUDA.gl or NNLib um, implementation with a Lux.gl model. And uh, compared to JAX, which also sees the, compute, the total compute graph, it's performed better in the backward time because it's optimized before, then perform AD and then optimize after. Um, what's the easiest way to try Reactant is, of course, to use Google Colab, which uh, now has a Julia mode, and you can select, for example, a TPU instance, and Reactant is installed by default on Google Colab. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for, for the really nice talk. I was uh, curious about uh, potential limitations of this raising Pass, uh, is, can it raise any kind of, uh, of a kernels or does it have some patterns that it can raise? Yeah, so it, it raises a kernel uh, through multiple steps. And so, yeah, it, it cannot raise, for example, like if you give it a flash attention or really complex CUDA kernel, it would not raise all the way through. Uh, but you, you can see here this uh, stencil kernel in, in the Oceanon model, and it raises all the way to a convolution in the end. So it's able to to do this, but it might not support all the uh, crazy kernels, I would say. Um, yeah, thank you also for the wonderful talk. Um, maybe you don't know the answer to this, but do you have any sense of the timeline of Reactant not taking 14 hours to build on Yggdrasil? Is there uh, any progress on that? <laughs> Someone else uses Iggy. Yeah, maybe Mozi know, know better than me, I don't know. <laughs>